Imagine a story set around two conflicting ideals with a side character willing to do anything to get the love of the main character who rejects them, which eventually leads to the death of the main character. That's right, we're talking about The Crucible and Agora because they're the same story. Hello and welcome to the December edition of English Demystified Electronic Edition. The Crucible and Agora both feature several significant events. The Crucible, surrounding paranoia towards witchcraft and the consequences resulting from this, and Agora, featuring cultural conflict between the pagans, Christians, and Jews, which is represented by so many battles. Like, there were just way, way too many battles and dead bodies. Like, there's even a decapitated head. And through these events, the stories show unique representations of human qualities and emotions in reacting to them. The idea of a mob mentality is a theme commonly represented through both texts. That is, a group sharing a common reaction to an event that occurs. In The Crucible, this is shown early into the play, during the accusations of witchcraft towards Chichuba. Upon her confession, Abigail and Betty burst out, wishing to reveal themselves to have seen different people with the devil and wanting to be one with God. This occurs on a larger scale during Mary Warren's questioning in the court, and upon Abigail feeling as though she is about to be revealed, she exclaims, You will not! Be gone! Be gone, I say! Followed by panic about a bird coming to attack her being Mary Warren's spirit. Once the other girls see what is going on, they all speak in unison, repeating everything Mary Warren says, trying to make her seem guilty of witchcraft. During both circumstances, a situation arises where a group finds themselves seeing safety in a common cause, which ends up pinning the blame on another. In Agora, mob mentality occurs repetitively, with many instances of two divides of the town acting against each other to defeat their enemy. This portrayal of mob mentality through the idea of fellow Fellowship of religion is very easily represented, as each group is wearing different shade of clothing, allowing us to distinguish them from each other, and gain a view of the good or bad side by how dark their clothing is. The pagans, for example, in lighter, tan clothing, and the Christians in black. The extremity of conflicting mob mentalities is most significantly shown during the fire walking scene, in which the Christians claim the pagan gods are not real, as they will not protect them while crossing fire. To demonstrate this, they walk across the pit of fire successfully, and then throw a pagan man into the pit and watch him catch a light. All of these examples are clear demonstrations of how groups act as one in response to a conflicting situation in a way to enhance their own goal. Stockholm Syndrome is a feeling of trust or affection felt by a victim towards their captor. This idea is subliminally represented through the Crucible and Agora in the way that Abigail acts towards John and Davis towards Hapatia. Although not specifically stated, it can be understood from both the words and actions performed by John and the authorial commentary put in by Arthur Miller. According to Miller, Proctor is a man to be feared. When introduced to the reader, he is described as respected and even feared in Salem. Proctor's nature is demonstrated in Act 2 where Mary Warren informs Proctor that she is an official for the court. Due to this, Proctor is outraged as he doesn't want anyone close to him getting involved in the court, which he knows to be false. He threatens to whip the devil out of you and only settles down once hearing that his wife, Elizabeth, is in danger. Even earlier in the play, Proctor shows his aggravation towards Abigail, shaking her, asking, Do you look for a weapon? Clearly, Proctor has some angry issues, and it can be easy to see that during Abigail's employment in the Proctor household, if she had not performed to John's expectations, she would have been in for a whipping or other methods of abuse. For this reason, it could be understood that Abigail looked for a sexual relationship with John to make him less hostile towards her and to live in a safer environment. This same occurrence can be found in Agora, with the character of Davis showing displays of affection towards his master's daughter, Pesha. We see what happens to slaves who do not follow the wishes of their master, and Davis is whipped for practicing Christianity in a pagan household. After this, we see her Pesha's caring nature and Davis's attraction towards her, revealing to the viewer his method of escape. This is a clear case of the paradoxical Stockholm Syndrome, as it was only living through a dangerous environment and looking for a form of escape that he found a need to be attracted towards Hypatia. Due to the situations that the characters found themselves in, it is easy to see how Davis and Abigail felt a sense of danger towards their captors and their mind created the paradoxical Stockholm Syndrome for them. One of the most emotional scenes between both plays is their main characters' deaths and the human reasoning behind them. Due to this, we can explore the methods of reasoning within the characters as to why they reacted the ways they did, leading to their downfall. The End of the Crucible demonstrates an emotional conversation between Elizabeth and John surrounding the choice of confessing to the court. This ends with John deciding to keep his life, but is immediately conflicted by him tearing up the confession, wishing to keep his name. This is a demonstration of John's true nature, as earlier in the play he exclaimed, A man will not cast away his good name, in which he had confessed to lechery. 
But now, as the accusations of witchcraft are false, he cannot find himself willing to taint his name with the lie. Due to John keeping true to himself, he dies with honour as he feels he is doing the right thing for him and his family. Upon her patron's kidnapping by the Christians at the end of Agora, due to her remaining pagan, they threaten to kill her by skinning her alive so she will finally feel something. Davis, as a member of the Christians, intervenes by saying, No! Don't stain your hands with impure blood. This act of desperation gives the two one last moment as the others go to gather rocks to stone us to death. During this moment, Davis holds Hypatia as she shivers with fear and they nod at each other, understanding what's about to happen. And Davis, trembling with sorrow, suffocates her so she doesn't have to feel the pain of being stoned to death. Davis made the ultimate sacrifice, making the decision to kill the person he loved in order to save her from pain. Davis and John both see situations where death is inevitable and due to this, have to make the right choice to make it easier on themselves. This human experience of death shows how humans perceive the situation and the rationale surrounding the decisions made in responding to it. The Crucible and Agora both display significant events such as witchcraft, death, and domestic violence. Due to these situations, characters display an appropriate response which demonstrates human rationale and paradoxical thoughts to these situations. Thank you for watching this month's edition of English Demystified. See you next time.